Hello, this is Dermot O'Brien from Spark Systems. In this demonstration, we will run over using the latest SysML options for simulating a digital electronic example in Simulink. We will use the new SysFIS modeling to reference components that are defined in Simulink. For a quick overview of this topic, we will firstly have a broad look at setting up a digital model for Simulink. Then we will look at using SysFIS patterns for creating predefined Simulink blocks. In this exercise, we'll use some predefined Simulink components, so we'll look at how to model complex Simulink components in Enterprise Architect using SysFIS. Then we'll generate our Simulink model and run a simulation from this. And finally, we'll look into options for debugging any issue in the generated Simulink script. For this example, we are modeling a simple binary counter using flip-flops, but we will use it to provide a number of divisions of a clock frequency. This type of frequency division was common in, say, an early microprocessor, where we had options for setting fast and slow clock speeds for the processor. So what we use is a digital square wave clock as an input, and see how, in our simulation in Simulink, the frequency output from each of the flip-flops in the series halves the initial clock frequency. Before we start creating diagrams and elements, we first of all set our perspective to SysML. This opens the model wizard. From this, we can access some SysFIS foundation packages that we need to reference in the model. It is best to create a package to hold both. Then select SysFIS and load the two libraries into the package in the browser. Now let's create a block definition diagram. For the simulation, we need to set up a reference to the SysFIS library. So we drag this library package onto the diagram. We first set the package boundary on the block definition diagram to selectable. Then from the package toolbox, we can create an import connector to reference the SysFIS packages. In terms of blocks for our model, let's start with the simplest that is, a SysFIS block for a Simulink constant that we use for setting a logical true state. This can be accessed from the SysFIS patterns. Under Sources and Sinks as a constant. Now what we want is a logical clock to get a digital pulse signal. We select the SysFIS toolbox and drag on a Simulink block. Then we need to create another block for our flip-flop. What we want is a reference to a Simulink digital clock. So let's get the correct Simulink path for a digital clock. This being a Simulink component, we find it in the Simulink library browser. You can see this under the Simulink extras flip-flops. We open the parameters dialog and work out the path. This can be accessed using control plus L. In this case, it is simulink underscore extras slash flip-flops slash clock. Then we input that in the block in the simulink block name. The other core component that we need to use is also predefined in Simulink, that is, a flip-flop. Again, we get the path from Simulink. We place this in the name field on the flip-flop block under the heading Simulink block. The Simulink digital clock has one key parameter that we need to define as a PHS constant on the block. This is period and it's of type time, which is in seconds. For this, we drag from the SysFIS toolbox the Simulink parameter. We name it period. For the period's type, which is time, we can use Control L to set the classifier to time in the SysFIS library. For the time, we can set this as a constant to two, for example, 
half a hearse, a period of two seconds. The first second is true, the next second false or zero. It also needs an output port. This will need to be a port of type boolean out signal element. So we drag this from our package reference onto the block. Then we name it as Y. For the flip-flop in Simulink, it has ports JK, QN and a clock, so we need to set these up. Note that these are Simulink components. These differ to the Medellic equivalent in that these ports are not identified by a name, rather they are simply referenced by an array. Hence the ordering of the creation of these is critical. The ordering of the Simulink array is from top to bottom for the inputs and top to bottom for the outputs. So for our inputs to the JK flip-flop, it's critical that we start with J, then do clock, then do K. These are nonetheless shown in alphabetical order on the block. We drag on the input ports. These are Boolean in signal, and then name them to match these ports on the Simulink component. Then we do the same for output ports using boolean out signal. Again, this is ordered by Q, then QN. In this next section, we will create the main block that will contain the IBD diagram. This new diagram is where we connect these ports as parts to form our flip-flop counter. Now let's create our block for the binary counter. Then we create a child diagram on this block called counter. On which we then drag on our blocks as components. For this, it's recommended to use the All option in the Paste dialog. To display these in the compartments, we delete the properties. The first is the Clock Period property. To keep the diagrams clear, we alter the diagram properties to not show the port classifiers and the property types. This gives a simpler view of just the port name. For our constant part, this needs to pass a logical one or true state to our J and K ports. We will set an appropriate name for this. We also give our clock a more meaningful name. Then we create four parts of type flip-flop. Let's name these as flip-flop 1 to 4. Now we reorganize the ports, placing the outgoing ports on the right. Then we need to set our connectors between the relevant ports to fit our proposed model. The first is from the clock output to the clock port on the first flip-flop. The subsequent flip-flops are connected from the queue to the preceding clock in port. Then we set the J and K ports to true by connecting these to the bool true part.
OK, that completes our IBD setup. Let's now configure our simulation. We go back to the block definition diagram. We see that we have the counter block populated with the new parts. For the simulation, we start by creating an artifact of type Sysenol configuration. Double clicking on this opens up the simulation configuration. On opening this, we firstly select the package to simulate. Ensure the simulate library is referenced. Set the parent block for the Sysenol model that we are simulating. In this case, it is the counter block. We set this as Sysenol sim model. Now we see the list of properties available to plot. So we can select which of these we want to use. Now we can run the simulation. The plot in Simulink is complex. So let's simplify this. In order to open the generated model in Simulink, we access the EA generated SLX file. Here we can see the components that we created in the SysML model as shown in the Simulink format, along with the connectivity that we set up in our SysML model. We can run this and view the plot and change what we want to view. We start with the output of flip-flop 1, then select the last output which is Q4. With each Q enabled, we see the simulation of the clock frequency being halved for each flip-flop that is passed through. When doing a complex SysML model, there are bound to be issues with the generation of the plot. So, on that note, let's have a look at the debugging and issue resolution when generating to Simulink. Firstly, we set up an error. We do this by setting a wrong connector to the block, not to the port. Now, when we run the simulation, we can see that there is an error created in the code build. This is viewed in the system output. If we go to the SysML simulation in the system output, we see the error that it has generated. If we double click on this, it opens the configuration at the port where the issue occurred. In this case, we see that the clock is the part where the issue is. An alternative issue checking method is to open the generator script file directly in Simulink. Then view the diagram and check the connection. Then you can run the simulation and view its error and see that it is a connector issue. Given this feedback, we can now do a simple correction of the model. OK, so in conclusion, let's run over what we have covered in this demonstration. This included setting up a digital logical model for Simulink by using SysFIS patterns for creating predefined Simulink blocks. Modeling other complex Simulink components using SysFIS. Generating a Simulink model, then simulating and viewing this in Simulink. Running over how to debug an issue and viewing the generated model in Simulink. Although we are focused on using MATLAB Simulink, please note that a similar scenario can be replicated using SysVis for Modelica. Hopefully, this gives you a good starting point for getting familiar with the integration and simulation with MATLAB Simulink. This all being part of the new SysML SysVis features available in the 15.2 release of Enterprise Architect. For more information on this, see sparksystems.com forward slash EA 152